beautiful souls. How are you? I hope you're doing well. The world is crazy at the moment, I know, because we're going through a massive transition, a massive spiritual awakening, and sometimes spiritual awakenings require pain, sacrifice, letting go. But just for tonight, just for the time being, let's carve out a space of safety, dreaminess, and escapism where we can fantasize a little bit. It's really important that in this period with a growing new moon in Pisces, you launch beautiful intentions into the collective you hold the light and you want to bring in the best in your life for ourselves and for other people so welcome to episode four of the thank you next series this is a series in which i help you manifest your next romantic soulmate and in this episode today we're going to be looking at the details of your next sexual encounter i know you guys love this topic so it's a pleasure for me to film this for you at midnight what i like to call the witching hour when the veil between the worlds is very very thin and i am at my most calmest <laughs> i feel the best at this hour so I carve out some time from my weekend to do this for you guys. I also want to share something beautiful with you to maybe distract you from the news that you might have been glued to in the past week. It, it's been a traumatic week but at the same time nature is actually moving forward. And, we, and when we focus on nature rather on, than on the creations of man, we instantly feel in a place of calmness, a, a place of peace, a place of love. Um, it's the same feeling when instead of being all wrapped up in our minds and our thoughts, we come back into our body, we focus on our breathing and we feel instantly safe. So I highly recommend that you guys shift your focus from time to time from the madness from the world of thinking from the ego of mankind to nature your body breathing and you know manifesting something positive is so so important at the moment that we stay away from manifesting fear and terror okay Good. So what I wanted to share with you is uh, we have a tradition here in Romania. You guys know I'm from Romania. And um, even though Putin is trying to uh, steal our spring at the moment, I want to focus our energy on this tradition because it's beautiful. So what happens is that Romanians like to celebrate spring and we celebrate it by wearing these uh, symbols. They're called Mărțișoare. They represent the coming of spring and the month of March. Mărțișor comes from the month of March, Martie in Romanian. And people love to wear these decorative symbols um, in their chests, like on their coats. Um, in between the 1st of March until the 8th of March. The 1st of March is considered to be the Marti Short Day, the beginning of spring, and all the way up until the 8th of March, which is International Women's Day, the celebration of femininity in my culture. And in between, there is something cool called Babele, which is like a period of really tempestuous, tumultuous uh, changes in weather. And it is said that according to the day that you choose, this is how your year is going to play out. So if you say, okay, my Baba is on the 3rd of March, the way in which the weather plays out shows in the morning your past, in the afternoon your present, and at nighttime your future. Um, and... I chose mine on the 3rd of March and it was incredibly clear and bright that day, even though it was a bit chilly. So it instantly made me feel much better about everything that was going on. Just a little something to focus on that can completely change your perspective. So I hope I can do the same for you guys today with this reading. Now I have here Marcișoare from two uh, different designers, two small businesses, two Romanian DIYers that I got the chance to meet at an event last week. Um, it was a fair for arts and crafts and I instantly fell in love with their creations and also they are such nice people and I highly recommend guys that if you invest in you know, in, um, in, in things, in objects, you invest in objects that you value and that you spend money on people that are people that you want to genuinely support because you think they're kind and good and their heart is in the right place. And in this way, it's like you contribute to the law of prosperity because that energy comes back to you. 
so i purchased these mercy shutter from them i specifically had in mind to create a reading for you guys as well and also i'm gonna give some of these to my family members but before that i wanted to show them to you in this reading so you have six choices here today you can choose either by the mercy shore image or by the tarot deck behind it so let me introduce to you the options we have here for group one this is a light blue star made out of ceramic and the creator is called the house of the suns for the up row and for um, the bottom row it's belong to art okay for group two we have here a lavender starfish For group three, we have this gorgeous, slightly pink dove with golden wings. Okay. For group four, <laughs> she's so cute. I love her expression. She looks like a baby Mona Lisa. We have a Cinziana, which is like the equivalent um, of a folk Romanian fairy, but it's it's more like she's more like a fairy princess. <laughs> And then we have here the heart of nature. So this is a pink heart with some ferns on top of it. And then we have a black cat, traditionally associated with witches and bad luck. Actually, black cats are phenomenal links uh, between the two worlds, the material and the spiritual world. And yeah, they've been worshipped for thousands of years in Egypt. So, you know, if the Egyptians got it right, hopefully... Um, you know, medieval Europe should have gotten it right too. <laughs> but we're correcting that at the moment. I love black cats. Anyway, so these are the options, the six options. Or either you can choose by the tarot deck. So we have here the Tower of Sexual Magic, the Decameron Tarot, the Erotic Fantasy Tarot. This is the Royal Dark Tarot. Uh, we have here the, Deca uh, no, sorry, the Kama Sutra Tarot. And last but never least, for group six, we have the um, Manara Tarot, one of the most graphic tarot decks. I'm also going to be pulling some cards from the Erotic Enchantment Oracle, which was kindly gifted to my channel a while back ago by Cherry Enchantress. And of course, I will show you who is your Divine Masculine. Just if you play along with this series, just so you see that there is a link connecting all of these choices you're making. And just to test you guys as well, to see if your intuition is improved to see if you are choosing uh, with that gut instinct and whether that matches with the descriptions in the readings. Before I let you go, I want to remind you guys that if you need to get in contact with me for a personal reading, to purchase my Twin Flame novel, to follow me on Instagram, to see my other channel where I post meditations, read with me clips, and um, I also post stream of consciousness uploads as well. Links are always down in the description box below for your viewing pleasure. All this being said, then I'm not going to keep you too long. This introduction is way longer than I planned it, but I had to introduce to you these beautiful options. I hope you made your choice and I cannot wait to see the details of your next sexual encounter. Mm -hmm. Hey group one, welcome to episode four from the Thank You Next series. In this episode today, we're going to uncover the details of your next sexual encounter. So this is for those of you that were drawn to this light blue star, Marzishor. If you don't know what a Marzishor is, go back to the introduction. I explain it there. So we also have here the Tower of Sexual Magic. And stick around until the end, because at the end, I'm going to tell you if you're playing along with the series, I'll tell you who is your Divine Masculine. And I'm also going to be pulling a card from the Erotic Enchantment Oracle. I have them here. Uh, I kind of peeked into who, <laughs> who your Divine Masculine is. Interesting. Okay, so let's see what the tarot cards have to say. Oh... It's going to be a little bit all over the place. I'm not going to lie. Um, a lot of cards dropped face up, face down. Wow, and they still keep dropping in this random, erratic, all over the place kind of way. Um, it's going to be passionate, I can tell you. And for some of you, it's going to be quite <laughs> wet, um, quite uh, juicy. So interesting, interesting details. Let me show you the cards that dropped here. So yeah, we have the Six of Swords blocked not wanting to let go of the drama 
we have here the knave of pentacles so feeling a little bit inexperienced but not wanting to acknowledge the lack of experience we also have here the ace of wands bright beautiful new beginning for some of you your next sexual encounter is actually going to be your first sexual encounter so interesting we also have here nine of pentacles this is about um a keepsake um this is actually going to be something that will um boost your self-worth especially for those of you that are virgins and you want to get rid of that status, the fact that this could also be your first sexual encounter is going to really boost your self-esteem with the Nine of Pentacles here. The Strength card, oh boy, <laughs> get ready. I, I would suggest resting now in preparation for this romantic encounter because it's going to be um, fierce, it's going to be powerful. The word forceful comes to mind, but it's not about somebody else imposing their willpower, their body over you. No, that's creepy. No, this is more about taming the other person's beast, <laughs> if you want to put it like that. We also have here the Two of Pentacles. So this talks about doing two things at the same time. <laughs> A person whose hands are busy with two things <laughs> um, multitasking multitasking you might need to press certain <laughs> erogenous zone uh, more than one of your erogenous zone will be stimulated at the same time um, and potentially sex toys will be involved also my hair is crazy in your reading it's like switching from side to side and you know guys hair represents sexuality so there is something here you know and this character is actually cutting a lock of her hair there's something here about that i'll get to it in a second um yeah i do think that yeah i'm getting this visual of a person that has like hair all over their mouth and it's like it's crazy we also have here the Nine of Swords blocked. I like to see it like that. This talks about overcoming sexual fear. And I think this message particularly applies for those of you that are virgins. So you're overcoming, you're stepping out of these worries that you might have constructed around the idea of having sex. And you're just going to get down and do it. And then you'll see that you have nothing to be afraid of. Um, you're facing your fear and usually this is what happens when we face our fears it's like we find out that oh, hmm. in my mind it was worse than what had actually happened in reality we have here the king of chalices so this next sexual encounter could happen with uh, cancer Pisces and Scorpio somebody who is experienced somebody who and I mean if it's a cancer Pisces and Scorpio lucky you they are excellent in bed water signs in the bedroom Oof, that's that's what i think we shine at to be honest <laughs> i include myself in this because i'm a pisces sun as well but you know don't take it from me take it from my excess anyway what am i saying coming back focusing it on your reading we have here as well the final card ten of swords you got a lot of cards and i'm a little bit taken aback by this energy i'm gonna pull one more for the sake of symmetry we have here the chariot yeah cancer so uh, for the majority of you this is gonna be a romantic encounter with a cancer with a very strong leo energy and this could also be somebody that has their sun in cancer on their ascendant um or it could be somebody that for example has their sun conjunct their moon because leo represents the sun and the moon represents is ruled by cancer and sun conjunct moon would mean somebody that is born on a new moon so a person that um is quite subtle um, they're just learning how to do things in this lifetime, in this incarnation. This is somebody that has a very robust, sturdy body. I can see it quite, uh, quite clearly here. Somebody that could have facial hair uh, or like a sexy five o'clock shade. Um, somebody that is very well built, especially their shoulders are very broad. Um, they feel like a bear, you know, you want to like climb them <laughs> and you want to like put your arms around them um this is a person that can be a little bit possessive um they could feel slightly 
like I feel that this person is <laughs> can come up very close to you, can breathe very closely next to you. It's like they don't want any space to be in between their lips and your skin, you know? Um, this is a person that can even like whisper a lot of things very closely to you, like before you guys get into the bed and have this sexual encounter, this person might actually come very close to your face, you know, like maybe put their forehead onto your forehead, stimulating the third eye here this is an individual that could like to um, remove the space in between you and them because it's almost like it hurts them it's like I want to be as close to you as possible you know and they're gonna show you this in the bedroom as well I think this is an excellent partner to have your first time with okay so lucky you if you chose this group and you've got nothing to worry about if you're a virgin I feel as well that for those of you that are not virgins this is a person that is uh, going to make love to you with feelings it's not the ace of cups it's the ace of wands but in this tarot of sexual magic the ace of wands looks so much more than just pure desire pure lust and a person that has a really strong hard on or is getting incredibly wet around you that would be the normal traditional interpretation of the ace of wands it's like basically it's a stick all of a sudden that appears out of nowhere held by the hand of the divine but in this beautiful interpretation it shows almost like two twin flames co-creating because you see the flames in the background so this could actually take place um, next to a fireplace it doesn't have to be like a real one it can be just one that is electronically activated like a screen or a projection of a fireplace up on a wall or maybe there's a painting of fire um, somewhere hanging it could be just a mantelpiece and you guys have like a rug or something very cozy placed on the ground. Um, I feel like you guys might start kissing on a couch or on a very comfortable soft surface and then you slide to the floor. And I feel like this is going to happen after you guys have eaten something. So I feel like this is probably a dinner date. I feel like this could take place in the home of either your place or their place. Whoever is doing the inviting, whoever is doing the cooking or the setting up for that day is the one in whose home this is going to take place. Um, I have a feeling that either you or the other person, you don't really like having sex in public. You don't like being outdoors. Uh, <laughs> I'm hearing that one of you has an aversion to insects, so you can't really relax um, outside. So you prefer indoors. And we have the fire here a couple of times. So we have it here. Yeah, We have it in the background and here. So maybe you guys um, enjoy fire around you, you know, especially... If this is a Leo fire sign, you know, they like to see candles burning, they like fireplaces, fire signs usually like to be around fire, you know, uh, camping outdoors. But I think that if they cannot make love to you outdoors next to a fireplace, you know, to a campfire with the stars above their head, uh, then at least they're gonna make it really nice and cozy inside of the place you know so you guys can truly relax so you can feel like you can uh, let loose and not worry about i mean look these are some really bright crisp white sheets right so um, maybe one of you has certain Virgo elements in your chart or Scorpio. I know Scorpios can be like neat freaks as well. So there is this feeling that, you know, one of you is like, I don't want to be outside because it's a bit gross. And the other one is just catering and it's like, okay, fine. Um, you know, maybe we can reach a compromise. I feel this will take place at nighttime, as I said, after you guys um eat after you drink because we have the uh, page of pentacles i feel like you guys are gonna make fun of the person's cooking cooking chocolate chocolate <laughs> chocolate wanted to come through this is so strange it's like i tripped over my words oh i think like you guys <laughs> so uh, one of you is going to make fun of the person that 
uh, cooked and arranged everything and the other person might pick up a piece of chocolate and stuff it into the other person's mouth and then kiss them. 11-11 when I said that, so this might actually happen for some of you. It's going to be really fun, it's going to be very messy. You guys could even have like a little bit of a messy situation where you like smear some cake on each other's faces and then you kind of lick it off each other's faces. It's really playful, that's the energy I'm getting here. I feel like one of you, after you guys um, make love, because I, I'm tempted to say make love with your group, it's that kind of an energy. I feel like one of you is actually gonna open their heart um, in that moment, you know, as you guys are kind of like relieved because you, <laughs> you know, you exhausted yourselves after the act itself, you're going to like talk there'll be some really sensual pillow talk and one of you is going to talk about a past betrayal um something that harmed them and i think this is gonna be your person and not you especially if you're like the if you're the virginal character in this situation i'm getting a sense that it's gonna be the other person the person with more experience but take it as it apply you know so um applies apply my grammar is really funny at the moment. Anyway, I'm, I'm sure you guys understand what I'm trying to say. There is something here about maybe even um, kind of play fighting in bed before you guys get down to it. There is also about um, this person really enjoying uh, taking you from behind. So there is a feeling here that they really want to um, secure your back. We have three cards here that show that he's coming up from behind her, you see? in various positions so here he is caressing her massaging her here he is like um, putting his hands on her belly comforting her whispering in her ear like maybe even kissing the side of her neck which is really really sexy in my view at least there is also the feeling that he's kind of like holding her arm and I think it's also to emphasize her voluptuous breasts. There is a feeling here that this could be like uh, maybe doggy style or from behind, like, you know, uh, maybe even in certain cases, although if it's the first time you guys are having sex, that would be really adventurous. But, you know, who knows? I mean, if you guys had a couple of drinks, that it could easily lead to uh, maybe some anal play as well. Um, there is a feeling here that... There's a lot of emotionality, there's a lot of good food and potentially some alcoholic beverages involved. Um, there is a feeling here of protection. This guy really wants to have your back. It's like he's going to show you um, that, you know, like he wants, you see how he's caressing her, right? Like caressing her head almost like in a, in a paternalistic kind of way, like I'm protecting you, you know, like I've got your back, you know. Um, like you don't have anything to worry about I'm massaging you even if, even if um, this guy could spank you you know it's like afterwards there will be some TLC involved in the whole situation um, I'm not sure why but maybe you guys might have had an argument before for some of you this could apply maybe you had this kind of um, you arouse this person a lot and then you guys had a disagreement and then you decide to kiss and make up and then you're proceeding to this night where one of you is cooking for the other person almost as if to apologize but then in the bed as you guys are engaging sexually the tables are turning and this person might want to kind of slightly spank you and treat you like a the bad girl the bad boy that you are um that's kind of the energy i'm getting here but then of course it becomes really tender afterwards it's just for the fun of it you know it's no this is just light spanking light um punishment it's nothing to do with bdsm or more intense practices let's see what your erotic enchantment oracle card has to say yeah fusion from behind so this person has a big big turn on for uh, your back um, and I think it's not just your behind I feel like a lot of you that chose this group could have some really juicy behind some really like voluptuous um, you know <laughs> behind but there is a feeling here that this person is also um, like enjoys your back your actual back you know your shoulders there is a feeling here that your neck maybe is really beautiful maybe even the curvature of your spine um there is something really enticing this person could really like your thighs and how they look from behind 
um, this person could really like to uh, maybe savor you from behind as well, if you know what I mean. So they might like to get in there um, just as a, a form of foreplay as well. Yeah, so it's a, it's a lot about like, I think your shape, your body and how they can control you. It's like sitting behind you is like sitting at the command center. <laughs> um, are you... Are you ready right now to find out who your divine masculine is? Maybe you've chosen this in the previous installments. Ooh, <laughs> a very abundant energy, the green man. And I like to make fun that this guy looks a lot like Sebastian Stan, a Romanian-American actor uh, who played in, you know, Captain America. So yeah, there is this, this energy that this guy is like very good with his fingers as you can see here and green also talks about you know being a little bit fresh a little bit inexperienced but i think this is more your energy rather than their energy it's like um they can show you a couple of things they can teach you some tricks you know um, and they appreciate the fact that you're a little bit more innocent or maybe some a little bit closed off maybe you haven't experimented so much in in your sexual uh repartee so to say and this person really enjoys that they think that okay i've got a lot to work with you know uh, i'm the green man i can uh, bloom a whole garden of sexual experiences for you if you just allow me to so that's what i had for you group one those who chose this really sweet star mercy shore i hope you have enjoyed this reading i hope you stay safe and inspired and loving even in the chaos that is taking place in the world at the moment and i hope to see you in my next episode from the thank you next series take care bye hey group two welcome to the thank you next series this is episode four in this episode we're going to explore the details of your next sexual encounter and this is for those of you that were drawn to this lavender starfish a mercy shore if you don't know what a mercy shore is go back and listen to the introduction i explain it there so let's find out what is going to happen okay group one was very sweet very shy i also got some virginal energy from them so I'm really curious what you're going to get. Please stick around until the end of the reading so you can find out what your erotic enchantment oracle card is and who your divine masculine is, okay? Let's find out from the Decameron Tarot. Okay, your energy is a bit more determined. It's more step by step. It's like, I know what I want and I'm going to get it. And I know how I'm going to get it. And I've got a plan. I even had to pull a card. Something about control here. Measured control. Planning. Okay, two more cards. I just... Yeah. Um, a lot of manipulation. Uh, physical manipulation. Okay, not mental manipulation. No, no, no. We're talking here straight, uh, strictly about uh, physical aspects. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Yeah, I think that this person is quite physical. This person is quite, um, you know, what you see is what you get. Meat and potatoes kind of individual. Let me show you the cards. So we have here the Page of Pentacles. Yeah, this person really enjoys the simple things in life. They like good drink. They like a good food, a good meal. Um, they like a good food. That sounded so wrong in so many ways. They like a good food, you know. It's like Thor hitting the table and asking for another cup of beer because he's really enjoying it. Um, I'm curious actually. Okay, I'll show you at the end who your divine masculine is, but that's kind of the energy I'm picking up on. So this person is really into um, the physicality of the sex that they are attracted to. So if this person is into same sex bodies, if they are a man attracted to a man, they really like um, manly muscles, they like uh, a manly body, the athleticism, uh, the, the buttocks, uh, the very like testosterone fueled thighs or something like that, you know? If they're a man attracted to a woman, they really like feminine shapes, the breasts, um, the behind, the uh, hair, the voluptuous lips, all of these elements, you know, the soft skin. So depending on what kind of a partner they are attracted to and the gender of that partner, they really like the physicality of that specific gender, yeah? Um, this person is very... I'm getting like... It's strange because it's the page of cups, but I'm getting a lot of uh, Virgo, Capricorn, and Taurus energy, like that whole need to touch you know and 
uh, falling in love th through their senses, basically, you know, they fall in love, earth signs in general fall in love with a person's smell and like their body, like the way they, the body feels and with a person's not only just presence and thoughts and communication and emotions, no, 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 earth signs really like a uh, you know, to touch their partner, <laughs> to be next to their partner. And a lot of them actually show love through having sex, you know. Um, so if you um, are in a connection with an earth sign and you're not having sex, then it could be that they're no longer connected to you emotionally uh, or vice versa. If they're really into you, they want to have sex a lot, you know, a lot. So we have here the six of pentacles. Talk about a lot of sex. This is a person that can go round after round after round. You see here six rounds. There you go. Make sure you, do, you drink coffee before meeting this person and having this encounter. Um, there is a feeling here that this person could like to have their... Whoop, sorry for kicking the camera. Yeah, kicking. Oh my god. Ooh. This person is like a little bit of a, of a bull in the bed. They could be a Taurus. A Taurus with um, maybe Pisces or Cancer placements. Um, so they can be a little bit rough. Uh, they can push quite hard into the bed frame and consequently into you. Um, okay, I just got some twilight vibes maybe you guys like twilight some of you are really turned on by the twilight scene when they break the bed is that is that i think i recall something i'm not a twilight fan guys all i know is what i've read by other people's interpretations of twilight and the gossip and all of the media craze that happened around the time of the release of the movies okay but i think there was something there there was like a pretty intense love making scene uh, because he's turning into a vampire or something so he's kind of like breaking the bed this is the same kind of energy though so i'm picking up a guy that can be a little bit um rough not because he wants to hurt you but because this is not a person that has very fine motoric coordination so this person is not very dex like dexterous I'm, I'm very challenged by words during Pisces season, apparently, but I'll do my best and persevere, guys. Okay, my Libra ascendant really doesn't like this wishy-washy energy. <laughs> Logic, clear facts. Anyway, coming back. So there is a feeling here that this person is a little bit like a bull in a china shop, okay? They are not so sensitive. Um, even their skin, like if you hit them or something, they can be like... Pfft is that all you got to show me what you've got you know and i think that you like that about them you like the strength but that actually can translate in the bed that you're gonna have to kind of tell them ouch you're pressing on my hair <laughs> you know or maybe you can unclasp my elbow from this position because i think you're giving me a bruise you know um so you're gonna have to do the um, the gentle sensitive coordination in bed but this person is gonna bring the the stamina and they're gonna bring the power and they're like there you know they're ready i'm just i'm getting this energy of a person that kind of makes love to you they're not even in the bed they're like they're standing up and they're just putting like they're just putting one foot kneeling as they have you on top of them that kind of an individual that has sex on their knees <laughs> i don't know how to explain it to you uh this happened to me with the sagittarius once and it was incredibly fun um uh, but it's like i don't know it's like because in that position you can push better that's all i'm gonna say okay um we have here the four of pentacles yeah so <laughs> you see exactly what i was saying about the kneeling so there might be a lot of kneeling happening okay i'm just gonna leave it like that leave it to your imagination who's doing the kneeling in front of whom and touching what and what in what position you see that he has her here on his knees and it's kind of like pouring wine uh but also there could be some spanking involved um this person might want to uh, receive some sort of um <laughs> like not applause but i'm getting that people from the outside could actually uh, stimulate this individual so like if somebody looks at you or catches you or uh if you guys record it you know for this person's viewing pleasure after at the later point it's like this person might want to um play uh your your homemade erotic movie in their spare time to kind of recreate 
the experience, there is a feeling here that this person is incredibly physical, incredibly visually stimulated. They really, I think that they love how you smell, they love how you taste. Um, this person could do a lot of licking, food could be involved in the act itself. They also would like you to be on top. I think it's also because this person could get a little bit lazy, um, but it's kind of like later on in the act at the beginning it's like they want to take charge they want to manipulate they kind of want to uh, have you in this kind of kneeling position you know uh, not that you kneel in front of them that they kneel as they're taking you as i said because of that pushback um, position but there is a feeling here of that's interesting because i'm picking up on a certain sensitivity as well yeah, we, we do have a lot of pentacles and a lot of cups. So this is an individual that has a lot of earth and water in their chart. And they can come at the act quite physically and quite powerfully. But they can also let go and be quite gentle and kind of allow you to get on top and have your way with them, you know. Um, I think that this person really likes your hands, you know, you see how he's touching her, it's like <laughs> they might, um, like even before you guys get into bed, they might slowly kind of like um, grab your behind in public, you know, or things like that and you might find it a little bit like, whoa, wait, whoa, where did this hand come from, you know, or they might just randomly like you're talking and all of a sudden they pull the hair behind and they just like give you a hickey, you know, like they, they bite you or, or they like kiss you, it's like they couldn't help themselves. I think this is an individual that... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but this is coming through and I'm gonna have to say it. It's like, they see you as a nice steak. <laughs> oh my God. They see you as a nice steak. You're like, oh, you're so juicy and yummy. I mean, you see all of this oral pleasure, right? It's like, here he's nibbling on his breast. Here he's like, oh, what's this yummy ripe fruit that I see here? Your ass, basically, right? Um, yeah, yeah. It, it, a lot of saliva is gathering in my mouth, sorry TMI, but I feel like this person drools over you. They really have it bad for you. I feel like you guys, I'm getting a sense of ice cream, spaghetti, I don't know why, maybe you guys might eat this before you get on to it, you know? Um, I'm also getting something quite similar to group one, because group one also got this, it's like food will, is involved in some way. Um, maybe you guys meet for drinks, you know, and a snack before that. Maybe you invite each other over for Netflix and chill. That's kind of what I'm getting. It's Again, it's going to happen um, in somebody's bedroom, in somebody's uh, house. I feel that this is most likely yours. I feel like this person could just come over randomly. But then it's interesting. Why randomly? Why am I getting this kind of strange energy? Because at the beginning, I felt like this is a step-by-step -step kind of energy. This is strange. We also have here, I think I forgot to show you this card, the Nine of Wands. Are you guys listening for both Group 1 and Group 2? Because I'm picking up very similar vibes. It's like Group 2's reading is a continuation of Group 1. I'm not seeing some clearly defined limits between group 1's reading and group 2's reading. It's the same kind of vibration, you know? It's food, it's physicality, it's uh, a person that enjoys taking somebody from behind. If you listen to group 1, that was very prevalent in group 1's reading. There is a feeling here of... I think that this person really enjoys brunettes. So if you're brunette or if your skin is slightly darker, they really, really like that. You know, we have here... You know, a person with kind of olive skin, person with um, like whitish pale skin and dark hair. Um, I'm getting a sense that, yeah, again, I'm getting earth energy and water energy, as I mentioned at the beginning. I feel like you guys are going to fall asleep afterwards. I don't think you're going to talk that much. Um, I think like this person is going to undress you quite quickly and just like really like touch your body and like caress it. And like that will be part of the foreplay, how you, how this person is treating your body. It's like they're going to want to touch everything and kiss everything and eat everything and lick everything. That's the vibration I'm getting here. This person has absolutely no qualms about... Um, you know, eating pussy or sucking dick. Um, there is just something completely natural to them. I think this person doesn't mind. They're really like just 
in it you know it's like i'm horny let's do it i want you i want to taste you i want the whole sensual experience but they can be a little bit like as i said i'm kind of like a meat and potatoes kind of person you know they're not that refined okay that's what i'm trying to say they're not that elegant or refined they're like hey <laughs> you know if my woman or my man has some wine stains on their body let me lick them off you know <laughs> that's the kind of energy um yeah there is just you know what kind of energy i'm <laughs> picking up on october fest energy <laughs> I'm sorry, no disrespect to Oktoberfest, it's a load of fun, but it's kind of like how Germans are having fun, you know, like, with a lot of sausages and meat and, <laughs> God, it's like the most cliche and traditional way in which German people can have fun, okay, don't, it's like, I can understand that there's a variety of different ways, but it's kind of like that kind of energy I'm picking up here, but maybe you enjoy that, you know, you find these kind of individuals safe, and easy to handle and this is an individual that doesn't have like skeletons in the closet or is super mysterious i mean they could get a little bit moody they could get a little bit crabby and emotional but then i think their head hits the pillow and they just fall asleep and i think that you enjoy the fact that this individual can actually take charge and can be quite forceful but you can always like as i said you can gently and sensitively tell them uh you know try not to push so harsh in this way and they'll be like oh okay good thank you for telling me <laughs> you know this person won't mind a little bit of directorial input from you in the bedroom so i think that this person also enjoys uh soft comfortable surfaces i feel like you guys are gonna have sex in a bed i feel like it can go for hours okay so as i said you know um get ready you could be a little bit sore afterwards it could be hard to sit down afterwards <laughs> okay so just you know um schedule this on friday night or on a weekend you know so that you can actually go to work replenished on monday morning there is a feeling here that this person could even have a a, a particular attraction towards shoes because all of a sudden the shoes of this individual stood out and they're not particularly interesting or beautiful shoes you know uh they look a bit like klompen you know like those uh dutch kind of sturdy shoes um made of wood usually uh but at the same time it's um or their sole at least is made of wood and the part on top is made of leather or other things but yeah again it's like i feel that this individual has an attraction maybe to um chunky shoes <laughs> This is so strange. It's the first time I ever get this in a reading. Maybe they like, uh, you know, they like you when you're wearing like combat boots or something. When you're expressing your more rough side, it's like this individual is like, yeah, I dig that, you know. They might like uh, an army, an army girl or an army boy, something like that. There's just this energy of, yeah, but at the same time, it's kind of like they are quite into their creature comforts, you know. Uh, so many sheets in the background. And this feeling of, uh, I like to keep things cozy and comfortable, you see? All these sheets, and we also have it here. And over here, there's a sheet, you know, on which she's lying. So, rough but comfortable. Simplistic but enduring. Um, sensitive but also quite physical and kind of, you know... <laughs> You can push into this individual they're not gonna mind it you know they're not gonna be like ow you hurt me <laughs> or my finger got caught in that you know this is an individual that finds quick solutions to any uh bedridden problems on the spot you know and i think this is an individual that delivers if only through the sheer pressure that they apply on your body on your you know clitoris on your penis it's just like they just go all in <laughs> no they leave no prisoners behind yeah let's see right now are you ready to see your oracle cards and find out who your divine masculine is so we have here dominion you are mine yeah so a possessive person a person you see the veins it's like really like a very um a tense strong way of grabbing her right so um 
yeah this person could even have like uh, some chunky jewelry like a chain around their neck or something like maybe some leather uh bracelets um it could be that this person might enjoy tying you up and tying themselves up. There could be a slight dom energy. I mean, we have dominion here, right? And we talked about breaking the bed earlier, so they wouldn't mind crushing a couple of plates or furniture in the act of taking you. Oh, <laughs> what was I saying? <laughs> it's Thor, of course. This is the energy I was picking up on, yeah? So it's quite sweet, but it's also very you know, strong. <laughs> it's not necessarily aggressive. It's just like when you have like a, I don't even know how to explain it without making it sound weird. It's like, no, I'm not going to use those metaphors because they don't fit in the context. But there is something here about when you, when you get like a big lump of love coming over you but it's like oh you're kind of crushing me right now but i i can see that you're well intentioned you know that's that's the energy so thor maybe you chose this in the previous readings i hope you have i hope you have enjoyed this reading <laughs> it was a little bit strange but at the same time i think that you guys are really gonna enjoy this it's gonna be consistent you know you're gonna have some memorable memories you're gonna have physical marks that this actually took place <laughs> there's not gonna be a doubt in your mind whether you had sex or not with this person this person will have marked you as theirs yeah so i hope you have enjoyed this reading i hope that you take great care of yourself wherever you find yourself in the world at the moment and i genuinely hope that you'll be able to come back and join me for the next installment in the thank you next series Bye, group three. Welcome to the Thank You Next series. This is episode four, and today we're going to be looking into the details of your next sexual encounter. So this is for those of you that were drawn to this ceramic pink dove with golden wings. It's a Mertz Shore. If you guys don't know what that is, go back and listen to the introduction. I explain it. So I am going to be live shuffling some cards from the Erotic Fantasy Tarot. And at the end, I will show you as well a card from the Erotic Enchantment Oracle. Plus, I will reveal to you who your Divine Masculine is. Okay, so let's see. The details of your next sexual encounter. Wow, one card appeared upright and then this bunch dropped down covered. So face down. Interesting. You're manifesting this. You're actively manifesting this. Uh, you could actually be super excited about being here. Oh, <laughs> such a pleasure for me to create this for you, to for us to co-create this because we got the magician, right? So you're bringing something from your unconscious desires out into the open. You're bringing this person in. Um, you're going to feel like when this next sexual encounter happens, it's like, I dreamt about it or I had a premonition that I'm gonna have sex in a couple of days or at this hour or in the season and it actually happened and I was like oh my god I'm amazing you know that's how you're gonna feel you are generally manifesting your next sexual encounter even without me needing to create this reading for you there's something very beautiful about your energy. You've transformed, you've been through quite a lot. And I have the feeling that you will be um, revered or adored by this individual. It's a lot about you for some reason. I feel like you're also kind of maybe using sexual energy to manifest your next sexual encounter. So you might be pleasing yourself and engaging in a lot of auto-erotic behaviors. And because of this, your energy expands and it's bringing in this individual, yeah? So let's see right now. It's gonna feel magical. It's gonna feel like, wow, I can't believe that this is actually happening. We have here the Ten of Cups. Oh, you're gonna feel so loved. So this is an individual that's gonna, and they could even make you cry with joy, all right? So they could give you an orgasm that is gonna feel, the word jubilant appears to mind. So it's like, you could have, oh my God. Okay, I'm seeing this individual that is like lying on their back and their lover is on top of them holding their body. And this person is kind of like, 
completely like in a trance like almost like you're experiencing so much pleasure that you're like um crying a little bit and you're also like saying oh my god and it's like <laughs> you're a little bit like um almost on the brink of fainting <laughs> what okay this is also going to happen um not in the bed it could happen on a table okay it could happen um maybe somebody like pushes a lot of things down on the floor and then takes you on a table this could be a desk this could be a kitchen counter um this can also be like uh, a table um in a restaurant, in a pantry somewhere, um, seeing kind of this country house for some of you. This is interesting. This is dubious because why would it be a table in a restaurant? Would this person like book the whole restaurant and then make love to you on the table after you guys eat? No, this is a bit strange, but I see that, you, you know, there is some sort of um, surface here that doesn't have anything to do with a bed, yeah? It can even be um, like on the top, on a rooftop uh, for some of you. It can be next to a swimming pool as well for some of you. Um, on the roof of a car. Maybe if you guys are trying to stargaze. This is interesting. Um, I feel water is involved for some of you here. Water and roses butterflies it can be next to a botanical garden or it can take place towards the end of may beginning of june okay so quite specific information for some of you out there um it will make you feel so good like you will definitely complete you'll definitely have an orgasm where it's, whether you're a man or a woman it's gonna feel like oh you know like a relief and it will make you feel not only that but it's like it'll make you feel happy like you'll cuddle a lot with your partner there will be a lot of kissing involved um maybe you're this kind of individual that like myself as well you really need as part of a foreplay you need the kissing you know it's like kissing is not off <laughs> not off the table kissing is the main entry point into my body you know um so i think that yeah you're gonna you're gonna be kissed a lot by this individual this individual is gonna probably make love to you in a missionary position and i think the position itself would be quite traditional because the setting is not like the setting is going to be quite spontaneous public in certain cases um this is going to be due to the fact that there will be a lot of pent-up energy so i think that you're going to have sex with this person after a while since you've met them and it's just gonna be the build-up, you know, all the fantasies, all the moments in which you guys privately touched each other, thinking of the other one. And yeah, because you're manifesting it, yeah? So this person is gonna feel a little bit enthralled, like you're this witchy individual. And they've been holding back. <laughs> they've been holding back for some reason. They've been resistant to this um, affair, to this affair. No, you're not their affair. It's like this person didn't... Oh, this person didn't want to mix business with pleasure. That's what I'm getting. They didn't want to mix it, but they couldn't anymore. They couldn't hold back anymore. What are the other cards? Because this is really interesting. We have the Nine of Pentacles blocked. Hmm. Somebody has been suffering from low self-esteem. Uh, slight codependent issue. I think that one of you might have been obsessed with work, very focused on work, might have used work as an excuse to not give themselves to you. I feel that this person will have fallen in love with you the moment that they meet you and then there will be this period of them acting very cold, using work in between you and them, but then eventually it's like, I can't hold it in anymore. I just love you. And I think this is going to be the moment. Um, you will have sex with this person the moment that they will reveal their feelings for you. Right there, on the spot. <laughs> and that's why it could be that 
this could happen in a public place. This could happen at this person's workplace. And yeah, uh, you might need to adapt. <laughs> adapt to the circumstances. Adapt your desire to the circumstances of that situation. We also have here oh, the Queen of Wands. This person thinks you're so hot, like irresistibly hot. They cannot get you off their mind. You really do it for them. You flame them up. And this can even be an individual that is not exactly hard to please, but it's more... Um, they could have some arousal problems you know they might have some if they're a man a uh, slight erectile dysfunction um if they're a woman they could clam up and get quite dry you know they could really or they might find sex a little bit painful because of that so there is a feeling here that maybe with other people they needed a lot of preparations or they could only make love in a specific position at a specific time of day after they prepared themselves mentally, physically for it. But with you, it's like, it just happens, you know, it's like, woof, instant arousal. It's like, whoa, <laughs> you are this person's Viagra, you know, <laughs> if they're, um, if they're a man, um, there is a feeling here that you just enrich them. And I think that also what this person is finding out with you is that they are an emotional, they need like an emotional trigger for them to actually be sexually present. Like maybe this person in the past used to kid themselves that, no, 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 I can control the situation. I can control my arousal and I know exactly for how long I can stay like that and what the outcome of my arousal is and how I can please a partner but you are a game changer like you arrived in this person's life and all of a sudden it's like whoa this is interesting and i feel like you um you will meet this partner when sexually they will be at a low point it's like nothing that worked in the past is working anymore and it's like they were almost close to giving up or going to have a conversation with their doctor about maybe getting some surgery it's like what's wrong with me and then all of a sudden you appear and it's like your gift i manifested this this is like pulling a rabbit out of a hat meeting you is phenomenal and i feel like both of you are gonna feel this yeah and both of you are gonna give each other these 10 cups of love this is happiness this is feeling like you found a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow you know <laughs> um yeah and this is sexual ardor right so we have the nine of wands and we also have the nine of pentacles here nine nine completing a really difficult karmic cycle and you are this person's reward you are this person's sunflower yeah this person's fire this person's august <laughs> yeah like bright blooming you see the background is so clear yellow bright light roses blooming everywhere desire overwhelming this person this person could furiously masturbate to you before they can actually have you it's like what are you doing to me it's like you you've put a spell on me or something you know and you might have certain pluto or scorpionic energy maybe you have pluto conjunct venus pluto on the ascendant venus in scorpio north node in scorpio there is something about you that just detonates the energy the sexual energy around the person and um there's something about you as well about resuscitating people's sexual energy you know like usually when your sexual energy is repressed you tend to manifest a scorpio in your life or a plutonic that can just easily kind of unshackle that desire within you um and what happens afterwards well basically it's your choice right whether you want to acknowledge that desire and act on it or not but i feel like this is the same energy you will bring into this person's life it's like i'm here i'm a hot tamale <laughs> i'm a hot mamacita and what are you gonna do about it you know and this person is like well i'm just going to clear my desk and have you right here right now <laughs> that's the kind of energy i'm picking up here whoa whew. 
this is pretty hot this is pretty sexy this person could even have oh this is really nice so this person could like wear suits or like um could wear designer clothes that are very trendy and cool and um they could wear a lot of black and white or browns or blues um and they look quite stiff and prim and proper and well kept and always clean but maybe like they have a um, like a naughty tattoo peeking up from around their waist you know, uh, wrist sorry not waist or yeah maybe they have something maybe they have like a snake tattoo encircling their waist or something like that you know uh what okay what came to my mind right now it's like maybe they have like a really badass tattoo like the yakuza you know <laughs> um kind of like the equivalent of the japanese mobsters right um there is a feeling here that but nobody knows about this you know because this person looks like an excellent upstanding member of society in their daytime maybe they could even work for a bank or a traditional institution you know um they could work in public administration as well or they could have their own business and they look very professional and then they have these kind of like you know, they have a collection of motorcycles <laughs> or uh, they like to smoke Cuban cigars. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking of like mafioso kind of <laughs> habits uh, or they have, yeah, these kind of strange tattoos picking up from underneath their prim uh, Armani designed suits, you know, it's uh, there is something here a little bit um, I don't want to say dirty but it's kind of like rebellious about them and you wouldn't expect that and the contrast of oh i'm so perfect <laughs> in other ways i'm so traditional and classical and institutionalized in some ways and um institutionalized no that's not the correct usage of the term it's more like i look like you know a square but actually i'm a flood of passion you know i'm a volcano at fifth desire but you wouldn't guess that's kind of the energy i'm getting here wow and it's, i get so much heat <laughs> in in my body at the moment so yeah this person is like a, a molten volcano you know ready to erupt but they're also quite romantic and that's what people don't know about them they're romantic they've got perseverance so they might not make love to you in really crazy positions but i have a feeling that they uh they like to act on impulse with you and that's going to be a really interesting development you know of your next sexual encounter it could take you by surprise as well because maybe you're not this person that likes to give in to impulse but with this individual that you're manifesting it's like yeah i've been dreaming about this let's do it you know so let's see your oracle card right now are you ready okay and i'm also going to show you your divine masculine so we have here tenderness safe in your arms and we also have here eros eros love so i have a feeling that as i mentioned before you know this is gonna be not a lot of athletic acrobatic things aside from the logistics of having sex on a desk or on top of a car or you know next to a swim like on the side of a swimming pool um you know kind of trying not to get too slippery you guys might even fall into the swimming pool <laughs> there is a feeling here that whatever surface you guys are making love onto it could even be like i'm seeing these tiles you know these white crisp tiles on maybe bathroom floor or kitchen floor uh, or a patio somebody's patio it's really interesting wherever the desire takes you and it's gonna be a lot of desire because as i said it's a pent-up energy and also because this person will actually admit that they love you and it's like the moment that they admit that they love you it's like they're their nether regions want to connect with you instantly on the spot it's like there's this volcanic explosion it's kind of like you see this pillar of light that eros is emanating that's the kind of energy as well so it's like a pillar of light is all of a sudden detonated inside of them and it's like i need to use this energy right now you know um and i think that you're you're really gonna enjoy this you're really gonna find this like whew, i can create such 
such a powerful desire in somebody what other things might i create in this connection and you might get a little bit cocky with your manifestations but it's gonna be very beautiful so yeah i hope that you you also chose eros in the previous pick a card readings in the previous installments that i had in the series i hope you have enjoyed this reading group three it's really beautiful wow i really i'm a little bit jealous to be honest <laughs> Okay, so I hope to see you in my next one and take great care of yourself until then, okay? Ciao. Hey, group four. Hey, my loves. Welcome to episode four from the Thank You Next series. In today's episode, we'll be looking at the details of your next sexual encounter. And this is for those of you that were drawn to this Senziana. It's like a Romanian fairy princess. If you don't know what a Senziana is or a Mertishore is, then go over and listen to the introduction. I explain it there. And I also have here the Royal Dark Tower for you guys. Stick around until the end of the video because I will show you your erotic enchantment oracle card and also who your divine masculine is if you're playing along with the series. If you're just watching this as a standalone pick a card reading, then hey, welcome. <laughs> Let's find out. What are the details of your next sexual encounter? For some of you, this could be a twin flame connection. Just saying, okay? Yeah, I got two, two. Really interesting. So two of wands is my twin flame card. And we have it here together with the two of pentacles, two, two. You're definitely having sex in 2022, okay? So if you've given up hope, um, this is a very clear indication that it's going to happen. Um, it could happen on the 22nd of the month. There is a feeling here that you're coming together in true union with your partner. Um, I know that in this series, I'm helping you manifest your next romantic soulmate. For you, I think it could be the soulmate that you already sworn your heart to, the one you, you, you know you've been connecting to on a 5D, on a spiritual level before you actually meet them in reality. For others of you, it's people that you already are in long, long term connections with. And I feel that now you're coming together for this physical union as well. I see here that she's sitting on top of this gargoyle overlooking this fiery sea and at the same time i see that this kind of robot image is holding her um whenever i see these hands i think of the crab cancer you know like that encircling enveloping i want to protect you i want to hold you kind of energy but this person can also have a poker face as well they can be quite implacable you might not even know what they're thinking um there's a very strong Capricornian energy as well, Taurian energy. I'm also seeing some Sagittarius energy here, some occasional, <laughs> occasional grunts, you know, occasional moments of anger or dissatisfaction that are just blurted out. I feel like you will be in control of this sexual encounter. I feel like you'll be the one that will be in charge of what goes down, when it goes down. I feel like you will also be wearing some really interesting lingerie um, or some sort of like either a lace or a black vinyl bodysuit. Um, you could be wearing thigh-high boots, you could be wearing a thong, you could be wearing... Um, I don't even know how to describe it, but if you've seen Go to Town by Doja Cat, she wears this funny, weird, plasticky, vinyl, pink mask. You could be wearing such a gear, you know, just like in the Doja Cat video. I don't know how you even call it. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a little bit of uh, a virgin in terms of um, the gear that is involved in certain forms of sexual play. Feel free to comment down below and let me know. Um, but there is a feeling here that you will definitely be wearing something slick and body fitting. It could be made of leather. It could have holes in it. It could be made of lace or velvet or this glossy vinyl kind of energy. And you're going to be incredibly like hot and 
fit and controlled and I think you might be even wearing crystals or jewelry. Um, there is an element here of showmanship. <laughs> like you will prepare for this, you know, you will prepare for it. Uh, I'm also getting here a three of pentacles energy. For a moment, my attention got distracted by the environment. Okay, this could be for some of you out there that are open-minded. You might be together with your per your person and another individual. I'm just putting it out there. This is weird, I know. I normally don't get this third energy, but there could be... The third energy might be some sex toys as well. I'm getting here somebody that is quite experimental. Um, I'm also getting somebody here that... Um, there could be like a height difference between the two of you and that is a turn on. You like that this person is a little bit bulkier or bigger. Um, they could be a person that is hefty, you know, it's not necessarily very slim and athletic. And you enjoy that, you think, oh, that's sexy, you know, it makes me feel safe and protected and like my partner is like the big person. Um, so I'm getting here that this is also going to be the kind of lovemaking that will have um, frequent shifts of position and frequent moments when you guys need to take a break. <laughs> you might be using a safe word or you might need to take a water break or you need to stop in order to apply lube to the next sex toy or something like that, you know, or dusting your feathers or... <laughs> like creaming your whip oh my god <laughs> i'm just getting like such strange things um yeah but i i feel like i need to say them um there is a feeling here with the hermit yeah virgo energy control um control privacy um, study <laughs> i feel like either you or your person will will have done your research okay and this is the exam day okay and you're going to be tested on a variety of different skills <laughs> it's like your your knowledge of algebra geometry will be put to the test okay in the bed <laughs> god i'm sorry i'm like pythagoras theorem legs spread open <laughs> what is that i don't know it's it's a strange energy maybe this person maybe you and this person are um exceptionally intelligent You're, you might be a little bit nerdy or geeky and because of the fact that you know people whose minds run a mile a minute they could find it very hard to be in their bodies and they could find it very hard to uh truly just get into the physical animalistic energy of love making you know when you just like completely shut down the conscious part of yourself and you're just like in it you know it's like it you're like in a trance you know mm, which i highly recommend that guys it's super replenishing but at the same time there is a feeling here that you guys can't do that so you need the stimulation, you need the toys, you need maybe even dirty talk, you need the scenario, the role playing to get you into that zone. Because without these things, it's like, it would be too boring. It's just like meat slapping on meat. I don't understand sex in that way. But if we cosplay and I am, and I am Han Solo and you're Princess Leia, <laughs> you know, um, then it might work, you know, I might actually get turned on. So that's kind of the energy I'm picking up here. It's really interesting. Um, or if there is some sort of like, if you're wearing like a weird suit and it's gonna take me a while to understand which button should I press? What knot should I untie? What does, you know, if I do that, what does the whole thing, ha what does it happen to the whole, what is it happening to the entire picture? What is happening with my language, guys? I don't know. Um, there is a sense here of excitement, of tripping over your words. Um, there is a feeling here <laughs> of wanting to kind of keep the whole situation controlled, but it kind of spirals out of your control and it becomes really fun and messy and hot. And um, there will be a lot of like knee-jerk reactions that will happen. 
I have a feeling that you guys could be both quite controlled individuals. This could be a meeting between uh, Scorpio and a Virgo. Mm, let me think. A Leo and an Aries. A Capricorn and a Taurus. You know, it's kind of like you both, you both are in control. You're both kind of on the same level. You're both kind of equals. But at the same time, it's like you're enjoying like the sexual tension between the two of you takes place at the fine limit when blunders mistakes are made and that control is breached and you have an opening <laughs> you know you can send your you can send your ship you know you can send your <laughs> your exploratory devices what is happening here it's like you need a challenge. That's the thing. It's like you or your partner need a challenge. You need a glossy surface. Um, <laughs> you need a, a strange bodysuit um, to kind of experience that arousal. It's like you need to be mentally stimulated and everything, all of these different elements contribute to this mental stimulation that turns you on. Um, it could also be that your partner has planets in the 8th house that are air. So for example, an Aquarius 8th house, a Gemini 8th house, a Libra 8th house function in the same way. You know, it's like they need that mental stimulation to get turned on. Um, like for example, I have a Gemini 8th um, house and I really, really enjoy dirty talk. And I only found that out when I met a partner that was really good at it. It was like... Ooh, like a completely new universe regarding my sexual arousal was opened up to me but you need to be good at it you know because you can't just like spew insults and call that sexy dirty talk you know it's it has to be done in a certain way um certain words do the job not all of them and i feel like you guys are very sensitive to that too and that's why i'm sharing this experience my own experience with you guys because i feel like you resonate with that you know um and your partner is gonna be very sensitive to that part of you too let's see the other two cards that i have here so, oh yeah so you got the emperor and then you also got the eight of swords like be mine baby whips and chains and everything um wow wow okay there is a slightly sadomasochistic energy happening here. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, like this is like safe word central. Mm -hmm. This is definitely tying the other partner, sex swings, like gagging each other, like, you know, using those paddles. <laughs> Oh my god, okay, yeah, this is this is pretty intense. It's gonna be really intense, okay? And it will be prepared. You're not going to have sex spontaneously. I think the thought of spontaneous sex horrifies you, both you and your partner. It's like you need the whole setup, you need the whole organization, you need the toys, you need the time, you need the intimacy, the trust that is established between the two of you. You need the special lingo that you guys have, the words, the commands, the role playing, you know. This is definitely like a dominant submissive master servant, punisher, victim kind of energy, teacher, disciple, but like of the dark kind. <laughs> Uh, I think it's a lot of fun and I think that's why you guys enjoy it. It's like you're creating your own little universe where it's just the two of you and you've got like the secret language and that's the turn on, you know? That's the whole thing, what we're creating together and we're breaking these taboos but we're doing it in a safe, contained environment, you know? I think that's a massive turn on about this connection. I don't think you would mind if your partner kind of scratches you a little bit um i think both of you associate sexual pleasure or sexual completion with a little bit of pain and uh ooh, yeah okay yeah i'm getting as well that maybe some i think could be involved okay i went there because it appeared and i need to put it out there for some of you uh what is happening tonight i feel like some of these readings are really full throttle it's it's been a while since i've been doing a reading like this 
Um, maybe it's because we've been so close to the conjunction between Mars, Venus, and Pluto, which was warmongering. But there is an energy here that still lingers in the air. There is something here, yeah, very powerful, very powerful about releasing control, containing control. Um, being at the mercy of somebody, you know, which can be a turn on for one of you. And the other one holding the control, holding the reins can be like the stimulant, you know, for their power. But like outside of the bedroom, you guys can be like perfectly equal, you know, like you could be the same age, you could work for the same kind of environment. And nobody knows, you know, it's like just behind closed doors is this whole universe of <laughs> should I wear the dark red devilish pink? play suit or you know are you going to ball and gag and chain me tonight <laughs> you know yeah that's the kind of energy i'm picking up here i see a lot of fluids as well okay so this is gonna be wet and juicy and moist and yeah there will be a lot of um God. okay yeah there will be a lot of like spontaneous uh, eruptions you know ejections so to say <laughs> Uh, both from the female side and from the male side, so maybe a lot of like orgasms that build up and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, or like squirting that happens completely random. Um, but not exactly because the other partner knew exactly what the other partner knew exactly what they were doing in order to provoke that in the receiving partner. So I'm mindful of the time. I want to show you now the cards. Are you ready? Are you ready to find out who the person that you might have chosen in the previous piles was? And also I have here the erotic enchantment oracle and my voice all of a sudden went really low. This is interesting. You guys might like to whisper. You might not like loud noises. Yeah, there's something here about whispering, you know, like muffled noises. So we have here... <laughs> turning away will you come get it challenge accepted so there is something here about playing hard to get um some of you could even have or you will enact with this person a very strong um like intruder fantasy as well you know like somebody breaking in <laughs> which is your lover of obviously breaking in and you're like having to submit to this person's needs um this is pretty intense for the next time you guys are having sex. But, you know, as part of the whole series, I think it would make sense because the person that is your divine masculine is none other than Osiris himself. Yep, there you go. Remember that we talked about Osiris representing death and the underworld, but also fertility and renewal. Very, very strong Scorpio energy here. You see that he's being held up by Isis, the goddess of sex and magic. So strong, strong Scorpio vibes here. Plutonic energy. Hush, hush. Whispers, secrets. Dominant, submissive energies. Chaining your partner. Acting out, you know, obsessive, possessive kind of energies um, in the bedroom. This illusion of complete control, of blind trust, of blindfolding the partner, right? Um, and this intimate, special lingo that you guys have. Ultimately, you know, this person wants to be adored and worshipped. And I genuinely think that you are the chosen one for them because they, they think you're so pure, you know? We see here Virgo and Aries. So this could be... A, you know an encounter between a Virgo and an Aries or between Mars and Mercury so it could be as well Scorpio and Gemini wow okay I'm a little bit shocked at this energy it's kind of powerful but also quite calming at the same time strong Pluto energy very subtle and yet packs a punch so I hope you have enjoyed this reading um, I hope you take great care of yourself and I hope to see you in my next one bye group four Ciao. Hey group 5, hello my loves, welcome to Thank You Next episode 4. In today's episode we are going to be exploring the details of your next sexual encounter and this is for those of you that were drawn to this Marzishor, the heart of nature, this pink heart with some ferns inside of it. If you don't know what a Marzishor is, I explain it in the introduction so go and have a look at that. 
now I'm going to shuffle from the Kama Sutra Tarot for you to try to uncover the details of your next sexy encounter. And please stay until the end because I will reveal to you, if you're playing along with the series, who is your divine masculine that you might have chosen in a previous video. And also I'm going to show you the erotic enchantment card that goes along with it. Okay, so I'm kind of getting that this is somebody that could have very bushy eyebrows or there's something about the eyebrows they have quite an intense stare um, they could have a quizzical bro like you know they could have that expression <laughs> um, for some reason okay hmm. my crown chakra is stimulated because I feel like scratching on top of my head this is strange Maybe this person has very voluptuous hair. There's something here about this person's hair. Um, I brushed my hair actually in between group four and five. So it's interesting. There is a feeling here that, yeah, that maybe this person has very curly hair. Maybe it's a little bit um, thick and thin at the same time. Thick and thin, what? Does that make any sense? It's like, I feel like this person could have like clumpy hair or uh, maybe they'd need to brush it for several like moments, you know, until it actually comes full or <laughs> softens or there's something about this person's hair. Maybe you like to kind of put your fingers to this person's hair. I'm kind of getting predominantly a person with a curly hair or you could be manifesting somebody with a curly hair because you enjoy people with curly hair what is this energy this is strange okay let's move on from hair to the two of pentacles so <laughs> i like this position it's it shows two people who are slightly lazy um but actually they're involved in quite a an enmeshed complicated situation going on here it's like they're allowing just their uh, sexual organs to communicate they're deeply linked here but at the same time they're both enjoying this leisurely position of like oh, i'm just resting on my back uh, although this could be quite difficult for your lower back uh, i can imagine because that lower back is doing all the moving so there is something here about having sex with this person when you're a when you're on a holiday when you're taking time off in a leisure environment so this could be at the gym in a sports room uh, behind the theater curtain um, or like in the back room uh, after an event it could also be at a camp someplace yeah so if you're going to some sort of retreat camp um, someplace secluded in the woods away from other people we see the woods over there right on a boat um, maybe as part of a exploration trip or on a cruise ship there is a feeling here of a sense of privacy and seclusion even though you guys could be surrounded by other people so it's it's a very fifth house kind of energy leisure fun uh relaxation we're on a holiday you know we can do whatever we want we've got the whole day for ourselves to organize uh, we don't have to keep to a tight schedule for some of you this next sexual encounter is gonna take place on a waterbed and for others of you I'm getting like um, a love hotel you know like those fun themed love hotels where uh, people that still live with their parents meet to have sex with their boyfriends and girlfriends in Japan you know and they are like they're different themed, like some of them have a pirate room and others of them have a love room and then you've got the cat room, <laughs> you know, it's, it's very funny, look it up, love hotels. Um, there is a feeling here that there will be some music playing, I don't know why, but this dark um, disc kind of makes me feel that there could be a vinyl, like a vinyl disc playing, you know, there might even be like a really old-fashioned gramophone. Um, or maybe this person has like CDs or like a cassette recorder. <laughs> like they have a tape, you know. Um, 
<laughs> this is so strange. Yeah, there's something here quite leisurely, quite nostalgic. Um, there might be something quite annoying you because I'm very annoyed by this um, part of my hair for some reason. I don't know why. But there could be something that annoys you and that you're trying to... Oh, okay, you're trying to cover. Mm. Some of you could be on your period. If you're female watching this, you could be on your period when you're getting the chance to have sex with this person and it could be annoying you know because it's like mm, you know i don't know if this individual is up for it they will be up for it don't worry but you might have a little bit of a bee on your bonnet because you know it's like oh, it's not the best time i'm not at my cleanest you know um but it's it it so happens you know and sometimes you know it can happen um that during your period like when you are actually having your period you could actually feel more relaxed and relieved and you could feel these spikes of horniness coming over you rather than before the period it, it just you know every woman's body is complicated and unique um, in their own way but there, there can be this feeling that you might be one of those women that gets horny when she is on her period um, and might not feel so much up for it before, right before you have your period. So we have here as well the Justice card. Um, so there is an equal give and take. I feel that I'm getting a sense that you guys might 69. Mm -hmm. I feel here that you might not do it at the same time. You might, for example, your partner could go down on you and then you go down on them and give them pleasure. Um, it's kind of like part of the foreplay and then you guys are going to get really into it, like full penetration. But there is a feeling here that you might like to burn some essential oils as well. We see the lamp, right? Uh, burning some incense, some essential oils. There could be like a humidifier in the room, like gently splurting uh, some fresh air or some scented air from time to time. I feel like it's going to be quite quiet, like you guys are quite silent, like you're just going to hear the moans and the heaves and things like that, but not you're not going to talk during it. And I feel like your partner is really going to look into your eyes. They're going to be very focused on you. Um, I feel like your partner will be this individual that they like honesty <laughs> in the bedroom, you know, like they don't want a partner that fakes an orgasm. So they're going to pay close attention to your expression, not necessarily to see if you lie. <laughs> you know, It's like you're going to bed with a lie detector. No, no, no. It's, um, it's more about just so that they can see uh, if they need to change something about the rhythm, you know, of the way that they're taking you or the way that they kind of move inside of you, if you enjoy it, if you like it slower, faster, rougher, more tender. Um, so I guess that you, you could give them nudges and encouragements and smiles or uh, maybe a more <laughs> stern expressions if you don't like what they're doing um, and they're just gonna pick up on that we also have here the moon so this is a lot about unspoken things unspoken cues um, I feel like you're gonna have this kind of sex oh this is really nice where um, you guys are gonna have sex you're gonna fall asleep and then the partner is gonna wake you up at midnight again and like just pick your body up and start massaging you and kissing you and you're gonna have sex again but it's kind of like when you're in between that dream state and waking state and all of a sudden you're receiving pleasure as well Oof, that can feel so good so so good um it's almost like it's a fantasy that is happening for you. You know, you don't have to do that much. Um, but obviously, I feel like it's, it's hard to put into words, but I feel like you're, you guys don't even need to talk. It's like you will know exactly what the other partner wants to do. And you're just going to bend already in that shape for them. 
it's kind of how um how like uh, a pisces and a cancer will have sex you know that's the kind of energy it's like you don't need to speak it's like i can feel already where you want to put your hand what part of me you want to kiss um and it's like you're already supplying that for your partner and it's kind of like this flow of whoa how did you know you know it's like wow this is amazing and the more your partner does that it's kind of like preempting the other person's desires guessing very accurately then the other person is like even more impassionately into it it's like whoo it's like experiencing this wave of freedom it's like wow i can be myself on such a on an instinctual and unconscious level you know like i don't even need to talk i don't even need to tell you it's this is amazing you know it's like we flow uh, yeah definitely like water signs having sex uh or water dominant you you could be like an airy sun but maybe you have a lot of planets in pisces and your partner could be like a capricorn sun but maybe they have a lot of planets in scorpio you know so it's kind of like you you gel well together um there's a lot of um there's a lot of sexual fantasies that you guys will bring out in each other and that first time when you have sex you're just gonna you're gonna experience this freedom this freedom yeah this freedom and this expansion it's like wow i think this is the person i can truly enact my deepest fantasies with you know obviously because they're your soulmate you know so there is a feeling here that yeah deep reconnaissance um like unspoken sexual rhythms um there is a lot of like peaceful silent very present love making you know um it could even be that i know i'm using the kama sutra tarot and it's kind of made for this blending of the sexual and the spiritual right but it could also be that you guys are both spiritual people so this could be two tarot readers having sex you know two astrologers having sex two yoga teachers having sex you know um <laughs> yeah to divinity studies students having sex you know it, that's the kind of it's it's not it's not bombastic it's not loud it's not about you know it's not pornographic it's not it's kind of like it's very calm and but at the same time present and like people painting a canvas you know <laughs> and you're thinking oh let's use this little slight thing oh and if we draw this line wow look what are we creating here if we use the easel in this way or the pencil or <laughs> it's like bob ross is helping you make <laughs> i'm sorry but it's like bob ross was a scorpio son by the way guys i mean he seems very soft and cuddly you know but he was a scorpio son so there is something here about that kind of subtle energy I'm picking up on very strong Cancerian and Neptunian, Piscean energy as well. Very giving. It's like, I give, you take. But then your partner gives on an equal level as you're taking. We also have the Strength card. And you see how they're blindfold? It's like deep trust. It's like, whatever you do, whatever you say, I fully trust you. Fully, fully trust you. I can see the scales in the background, Libra. So I guess that in this deck, they're flipped. You know, in certain decks, strength is number um, eight. In other decks, it's number 11, so on and so forth. You know, and uh, strength and justice switch according to the deck that you're using. They switch number eight to number 11. But what I see here is that I will interpret this as a strength card. To me, this is what it says, even though there's the Libra energy in the background. There is a feeling here that, you know, I fully give myself to you. Like, you know, I don't care. I'm yours fully. It's like, I know that you'll take very good care of me no matter what you do to me in the bedroom. And there's a sense of merging, blending with each other. Wow, I think this is the most spiritual pile out of all very different than pile one and two very very different it's like i'm getting this energy like you guys are floating or like you're way up above i feel like even after you you make love you still feel this person's energy haunting you like 
you feel that they're there somewhere around you you could even start touching yourself thinking of them and it's like you'll have a powerful explosive like orgasm um like you would have a different kind of orgasm if you uh were using a toy you know a sex toy or if you were watching porn it kind of it would be in a different way different intensity but with this person when you're thinking of them each time it's like there's this inner flame lit up it's very difficult to put into words then we have the 12 of cups which is basically the knight of cups so this speaks about an invitation whining and dining um i'm kind of getting the feeling that after you guys have sex this person will take you out to an event which is strange because you would imagine that the event or the dating part happens before sex not after it but maybe this person needed to have sex with you to truly feel like they can open up to you i feel like you guys are going to meet as i said someplace where you both practice an activity for recreation for leisure a hobby some sort of sports you could be on a holiday you could be on a retreat you could be far away from society and your normal everyday cares when you guys meet it could be like some sort of spa or some time you take away from the cares of the world to to take care of your mental health and then you guys meet you you have this beautiful merging like sex you can't believe how amazing you flow into each other how intuitive your love making is how you kind of second guess your partners no you you guess not second guess because that's about doubting you're just intimately guessing your partner's needs without them needing to put them into words and it blows both of your minds away and then there's gonna be some classical dating happening it's almost like having sex with you makes this person shy or makes it makes this person feel like we might have rushed things let's take it step by step because i really want to get to know you that's interesting it's kind of the opposite way of doing things but hey it's happening and then we have the 13 of swords which is the king of swords sorry queen of swords and this speaks about Let me see the erotic enchantment card as well. Yeah, ah, okay. Submissive heart, I am yours. I think that this person would like it if you are to treat them a little bit rough. If you were to tell them what to do in the bedroom. If you were just to kind of like take their head and guide it down to your sexual parts. If you want oral pleasure, you know. Or if you just like, instead of asking them for permission or looking at whether they would enjoy it or not you're just gonna go for it and do something completely blows their mind i think that this person would really like to be submissive to you rather than the opposite way you know um okay interesting they want to give themselves fully to you very neptunian very piscean energy are you ready to find out who your divine masculine is well, it's none other than Maui, okay? So our oceanic adventurer, our hero. So there is something here about this individual kind of... Yeah, and Maui's story is really interesting because um, as I explained in the previous installments, he had some pretty strong female uh, authority and energy in his life. And Maui actually grew up without the love and care of his mother. His mother treated him pretty badly and he kind of always wanted to please her. So I think that by projection this partner is looking for uh, a badass babe that he's trying to always please you know and um, this also translates in the bedroom through a desire to please you orally sexually anally in a variety of different ways but it's like just make me your sexual slave you know i'm here i'm willing to obey and serve you my queen yeah so and this especially applies for those of you out there that are in heterosexual connections yeah um for some reason anyway i think this is the reading that i had for you so very soothing i feel like i'm ready to go to bed right now <laughs> you know i feel like mm, this this is putting me to bed maybe this partner would love to put you to bed I'll read you uh, a dirty bedtime story <laughs> 
Okay, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this reading and I really hope to see my next one. Bye. Hey, group six. Hello, my loves. Welcome to Thank You Next, episode four. In this episode, this, <laughs> we're going to be looking at the details of your next sexual encounter. And this is for those of you that were drawn to this little cat and it's accompanying Marci Shor. If you don't know what that is, go and check out the introduction. I explain it there for you guys. So I'm going to be using the Manara Tarot to try to uncover the details of your next sexual encounter. And please stick around until the end of the video because I also have an oracle card and I'm going to show you the Divine Masculine card. Did I say video? I meant reading. You don't have to watch the whole video if you don't want to. So just until the end of this reading, okay? I've been a little bit challenged in my speech since uh, Pisces season began. Pisces is a non-verbal energy, so yeah, it's a lot about maybe showing you the images that I have here for you. Let's see. Wow, so the cards are popping pretty well. One popped with a bang and it's a pretty violent card. Hmm. What is happening tonight? It's like, it's so interesting. I haven't been doing a sexual reading in such a long time. And when I do it, it's packing a punch. It's very like powerful. So let me show you the cards that you got. You got the King of Pentacles. This is a come to daddy kind of energy. This person, the soulmate that you're trying to manifest is definitely older and more experienced than you. This can be a person that has even, uh, it could be that they come from a social a different social class um, so they could be richer than you they could be more established they could have already made a name for themselves while you are the budding student the ingenue the person that is just making their debut into the society it's like um leticia casta and yves saint laurent kind of connection you know that's the vibration. Leticia Casta is a Taurus sun model and Yves Saint Laurent was a, a Virgo sun couturier. So we have here as well four of water. So four of cups. This is a woman kind of bathing in a lake and there are these two men looking at her like, hey, what's good? You know, moon and cancer kind of energy. So I feel that you are incredibly attractive. Um, it doesn't necessarily pertain to how you look. Um, it's not about whether you're fat or skinny or you look good in Christian Louboutin shoes or whether you, uh, I don't know, shave your legs. Mm -mm. Sexiness is deeper than that, guys. It's just, it's like the pheromones you you spread out around you it's like the way you walk the way you talk the tone of your voice the the way you move um there is something very sultry very yeah very alluring about you you know and you can do whatever you want but it's part of your nature and you cannot tone that down um yeah, there's just something here. There's something very elegant, very refined, very... Yeah, like, uh, come hither, you know, come hither about you. Very Jessica Rabbit, <laughs> you know, kind of energy. You don't need to do much. Even in the moments when you need to look decent and prim and proper, you still ooze this sexual magnetism. Even if you were to wear a potato sack, you know, people would still want to go to bed with you. So it's not necessarily so much about... What am I trying to say here? You make people lose the plot. That's what I'm trying to say. You make people lose the plot. And I feel that there is exceptionally an attraction here between somebody that is younger and somebody that is slightly older. We have here the four of fire. And this is your first significant synchronicity in this reading. Four, four, four of cups, four of fire, water and fire energy. Um, so I feel like you're attracting or you're trying to manifest an older, more experienced, wealthier uh, person with authority that is incredibly attracted to you physically sexually attracted to you 
this is a Virgo, Taurus or Capricorn that you're trying to bring into your sphere. And you are a person that, you know, <laughs> you're the hostess with the mostess, yeah? You're a person that is, um, as I said, very, very attractive. There's just something about you that makes people like want to do this to you, okay? Mm -hmm. So they want to please you, they want to cater to you. Um, you could have like um, Leo very visible in your chart. Uh, sun on the Ascendant, Sun in the first house, uh, Leo Midheaven, uh, Venus conjunct Mars in Leo, uh, Leo 8th house. It's just like people want to cater to you. It's like bow down to my queen, you know. Um, there's just this light that you exude. And then we have this card. This is the card that popped a bit more fiercely earlier. So this is the Ten of Wands. And you see he's kind of like trying to kind of impose himself on her, which is... I really don't like this card, to be honest. This is the Saturn and Sagittarius card. There is a, a feeling here that you could be attracted to individuals that are older than you. There is an age difference situation here. There is a power difference as well, a power dynamic that can turn very sexual. Um, I think that you would enjoy being a little bit rough handled. Um, not like in a full-on aggressive, let me call the cops kind of way, you know? This is more about you like a partner that kind of takes you a little bit rougher or kind of knows what they're doing and kind of can take the lead and can direct your body. I feel like you're also a person that could be very drawn towards wearing vintage clothing and you might be wearing a vintage dress, a vintage pair of pumps, um, you could be dressed in a in a style that doesn't belong to your epoch, so you could be a person that really enjoys wearing costume jewelry, and you might like to dress like people in the 1950s, you know, uh, there is something about that, and you're very turned on by um, a large gap in age. Um, maybe people your own age don't do it for you, but this individual, because they're a little bit older, they already kind of turn you on. Um, there is a feeling here that uh, you might have this encounter. I'm getting like... Um, okay, I'm getting a variety of things. In the kitchen, at a diner, at a workplace. Um... It's like in a pantry someplace where people are putting like a lot of preserves. Um, this can even be the back room or the office of this individual. And this person could be working in the food business, food industry. Um, in the stairway. This could be a situation where this person is taking you up against the wall or up against the stairway. Um... This can also happen in the shower as well, in a body of water, in a swimming pool. Um, it can happen early in the morning. Yeah, so I'm getting a sense of uh, rise and shine. Hey. <laughs> and there is a feeling here of coordination. Um, this person will initiate. You are just um, the temptation. This is an individual that has been around the block a couple of times, so to say, a person with experience, a person that could have been married in the past, um, a person that definitely was in a couple of long-term connections, but also a person that you might enjoy being punished by. So again, some it's not full-on you know, dominant submissive dynamic, you don't need to be part of the BDSM community. But there is a feeling here that you might like to be punished by um, sexual partners that are slightly older than you, um, associating pain with pleasure. We had this with group either three or four had this as well. I feel like you get really turned on when your partner enjoys your legs, your thighs, and your sexual organ. I feel like you really like it when a person has the hots for that part of your body, when they just hone in on that, you know? Um, 
I think you really enjoy giving sexual pleasure to your partner, but in a different way than like you you want to look good you want to look like a snack i'm getting a very strong sugar daddy sugar baby kind of energy here uh, or sugar mama right so there is a feeling here of a person that has a lot of wealth and power and prestige coupling up with a person that is lower on the social economic scale but yet they have a lot of uh social capital in terms of their relations their youth uh, physical capital especially their body they might look very good and young and prim and proper and i feel like you're gonna have this next sexual encounter either in this person's garden in this person's pantry or kitchen um there seems to be that this person could have like a, a mansion um i think that some of them might work from home um depending on the age in this, of this individual they might have even retired or they have their own business and they work from home and the home is their office you know so it's like you're having sex in their home um that's the kind of energy this person could have a house next to a lake a beach we also have here um the wheel of fortune the mirror so um there could be glossy surfaces um, I'm getting a sense that some of you could actually have your next sexual encounter with um, your dance teacher, your art teacher, your acting teacher, something like that. Um, <laughs> there could be a leather jacket involved. You might enjoy wearing a leather jacket and sexy boots. That might be the only thing you're wearing on the day. Uh, or you could be wearing this kind of Catholic schoolgirl uh, attire or this kind of 1950s um, very sweet and cute and polka dotted energy or this kind of medieval maiden robe that is just just uh, slightly modified around the waist and the thigh area this person could rip your clothes off I can see it very clearly here her clothes are kind of torn and shred so like rip your clothes off and dig in you know um this person might not have had sex for a while and they're incredibly desirous of you know just give it to me i just want it now mm. I think part of the enjoyment of this sexual act is how much you get to be desired by this individual how you can turn this person on because the mirror has a certain element of autoeroticism so in a way you're not only making it's not really making love to be honest it's more like sex you know you're not only having sex with this individual you're also having sex with how this individual how much this individual desires you and this usually happens if you grew up not being so desirable. Like if you're a very beautiful person, but you didn't have success with people around you or the same age as you. Um, and then you finally found that a certain age group really appeals or is attracted to you. And that's why you select this partner out of this age group. Because it also makes you feel desired, like to an intense degree, and you need that. This is strange. It's kind of like a minor therapy session for some of you. Um, sorry, I don't know where that came from. Okay, I'll just come back to this. Um, I feel that this person will want to lock you down. I feel like with two four fours here, this is an individual that... Um, wants to have you around them for a long time so they might propose to you um i feel like you're really turned on by this idea as well um by having this slightly older more mature more experienced wealthier person take care of you financially but also sexually and i feel you're really turned on by the idea that you can instill so much desire in somebody you know um and i think this person really feels very 
manly or lordly or kingly around you um, also because of your youth um, but also because you're very good looking um, and you finally feel validated to a certain extent that's what I was talking about earlier it's about a sense of validation it's like finally somebody sees me but it's a little bit of a strange energy I'm not going to lie um, it's strange that these cards actually came let's let's just see the cards came I'm not sure if we did <laughs> sorry guys a bit of a <laughs> dirty humor the moon yeah i feel you could be working out in this encounter certain unconscious patterns um certain sexual desires that were pent up could be coming up to the surface and you needed this mature established individual to feel safe enough to explore them with the punishment is the hanged man the wheel of fortune and the moon we have here pisces jupiter and cancer so you could have sex while jupiter is transiting in pisces you could meet this individual while jupiter is transiting in pisces this individual could become your husband and you know it's like you'll feel very eager to please this person very um but more like they will be feel eager to please you to be honest you know they're like you know just give it to me i want to eat you up and it's like mm, what are you hiding there so yeah this person is kind of like they put you on a pedestal and you're really enjoying that because i feel like you're an, an individual that either was not surrounded by the right kind of people to really um establish your sense of self-worth or you grew up maybe in a poor or violent neighborhood and now you have a certain kind of air of stability and you can let loose and safely explore your sexual desires whereas in the past maybe you kept things very close um yeah gives a feeling like maybe you found men of your own age or people of your own age a bit threatening mm. it could be as well that you find people your own age childish and immature too much into that bro kind of culture and you just want a person that is like a bit more like they know what they're doing they're not into that bro mentality you know they're authoritarian but also wise and kind saturn energy yeah definitely capricorn energy this could be a pairing between a capricorn and a pisces a sagittarius and a taurus Mm -hmm. a cancer and a libra or a cancer and a pisces yeah let's see right now what your erotic enchantment card is waiting is my choice you waited a long time to meet this person and now this person is finally here and they're not only providing for you financially but they're also able to kind of help you fulfill um a lot of your fantasies you see how he's catering to her but then he's also slapping her and i think you see how she's like bending her neck with pleasure it's like ah oh. so it's at her own request as well you know he's not just punishing her just because but maybe that whole scenario of oh you've been a bad girl let me teach you a lesson could play out you know and you see how she's um in this very stalking posture just waiting you know are you ready to find out who this individual is? So we have here Ganesha, obstacles. So I feel like this individual, if you've been having any hangups about sex, if you found it very hard to relax with people your own age or the same kind of group of friends that you grew up with, if you thought that, oh, these people are so unevolved and unelegant, well, we have here the energy of Ganesh entering into the picture in the guise of this older Taurus, Capricorn or Virgo, in some cases Cancer as well, kind of bringing this vibration of, yeah, I know what I'm doing, you know, I'm competent, I'm confident, um, I've got money and all this time, I want to spoil you, you know, so yeah, I feel like um, there could be a lot of, maybe this individual also has some slight fetishes, like they might have 
um, soft skin fetish or shoe fetish, all sorts of things that really turn on the desire. And you're like the model, right? You're, you're their muse. And you're really enjoying this role and it's healing for you. So please don't take um, in, a, in a very weird way what I said earlier. I was trying to pick up on the energy what was happening here, but I think you're healing certain parental neglect in this relationship with this person that is older than you because this person makes you feel safe enough to let loose emotionally and sexually. So that's what I had for you, group six. I hope you have enjoyed this reading. I really hope that I'll see you in my next episode. Take great care of yourself and see you then. Ciao.